Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Caitlin and if you are new here, we talk about all things girly and all things smell good. So if you like that type of content, I hope you stay. So in today's video, we're going to be going over my coziest, most comforting perfumes that I have in my collection. This video, I actually, I did a poll over on Instagram asking you guys um, what video you would want to see from me. I chose, I think, four different ones to choose from, and this was the most selected. I think like 70% of the people that have voted actually selected this video, so that is why I'm coming to you guys with one of my favorite categories of perfume. So I have quite a few options here, so before we get straight into it, go ahead and leave me a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment down below with your favorite, most comforting, cozy perfumes. So I'm going to start off with the one that actually inspired me to want to do this video, this is one of my probably like top three most comforting out of my entire collection and that is Dead Cool Taunt. So this one is, it's a vanilla fragrance but it's just so much more than that. To me this one is like the cool girl of vanillas. I am going to read you guys the notes on all of these. The notes for this one are, at the top are Dewdrop and Bergamot, the middle notes are Floral Notes and Cassis, and the base notes are Vanilla and Amber. This is a an ambery vanilla type of scent, but there truly is nothing like it that I've ever smelled. It's comforting, it's warm, it's cozy, it has this like cashmere vanilla amber mixture that is intoxicating it's technically categorized i think as like a skin scent but i do get a little bit of projection on this one it does last very well this one just it reminds me of like a nice cool day in the fall you're cozied up and like you have a blanket you're reading a book it is just so perfect as soon as i got a sample of this i put it on my skin and the way it transformed on my skin was magical this company is actually a um clean vegan company so if you guys are looking for more clean fragrances definitely check them out if you like the thought of like a cool girl vanilla that's so, like comforting and cozy kind of makes you want to like cuddle up to someone when they wear this this is absolutely perfect the next one that i have here is vanilla sky by skylar this is also just absolutely perfect for like comfort cozy type of day this one is like a very delicious like creamy cappuccino like a vanilla cappuccino with some caramel in it it is just so perfect and the longer it sits the better it gets so the top notes of this one are cappuccino sweet orange and bergamot the middle notes are vanilla spanish jasmine and cinnamon and then the base notes are caramel amber sandalwood and cedar so I don't really get any floral touches to this one. I would say it's just kind of what keeps it from being too dense because cappuccino, vanilla, caramel, amber, sandalwood, those are all pretty dense notes most of the time unless they're uplifted with like a nice floral or a nice cedar. Um, there's some fruity notes in the opening. I don't get any fruitiness at all in this one. To me, this is just like a pure cappuccino, like a vanilla cappuccino topped with caramel drizzle and maybe like whipped cream or ice cream is so yummy again this is perfect for cooler weather but i had actually been reaching for this in warmer weather and it was just again cozy it made me want to curl up in a ball with like an oversized hoodie on it is so so perfect and the longer it sits the more the more strong it gets and the longer lasting it is as well so if you have this one and you have any kind of like projection issues or longevity issues give it some time to sit the vanilla is macerating, so it's getting a little bit darker. I'm definitely excited to pull this one out on the cool, fall, cold days, especially the days where I just want to cuddle up. So I'm going to follow that one up with Amore Cafe. As you can see, this is a newer one in my collection. This is almost like the more thick, syrupy, grown-up version of Vanilla Sky by Skylar. If you find like Vanilla Skylar is just not thick enough or syrupy enough, definitely give this one a try. So this one has top notes of coffee and amaretto, middle notes are ice cream and vanilla, and the base notes are brown sugar, vanilla, and ambergris. So this one is a brown sugar, kind of boozy, 
thicker, more syrupy version of Vanilla Sky. It's they're not identical by any means at all, but like I said, it's just like a more grown up version of Vanilla Sky. I could see myself wearing this on like a night out or like even to like a dark lit dinner, even though I do find this very cozy. I the very first time I smelled this, I actually immediately thought of the show Vampire Diaries, so it how, how it has that very kind of dark, spooky, mysterious aesthetic, but it's still comforting. This is exactly how I feel whenever I wear this one, whenever I smell this one. That's exactly where it takes me, like time and place. I used to be obsessed with Vampire Diaries, so as soon as I made the connection of the two, it was like a magical moment. So this one, it's creamy, it's vanilla, but there's coffee in there, there's the brown sugar. It is boozy, you get that booziness in there, but it's not overpowering. It is a majority, like a major vanilla-esque type perfume, but with those other notes in there, it balances it out. It gives it some like boozy, sexy sweetness, but it is still super comforting and super cozy. Next up is probably still yet my all-time favorite perfume. This is I Don't Need a Prince by My Side to Be a Princess. And this one is just like the ultimate cozy scent for me. This again is in my top three perfect cozy scents of all time, but this is probably still in the number one spot of just my favorite perfume ever. So this one has top notes of lemon, middle notes of green tea, ginger, peach, hedion, jasmine, and apple, and the base notes of marshmallow, vanilla, and benzoin. The main notes that you get in this one are the green tea, the marshmallow, and the vanilla. You do get a hint of the ginger in there. It's not overpowering. You get a little bit of that kind of like a candied citrus in the opening. Again, it's not overpowering. It does die down pretty quickly, so if you're not a citrus lover, this is still super, super safe. This one, it just reminds me of like warmth and happiness, like the, the butterflies you get in your stomach whenever you know you're about to go home and sit by a cozy fire and drink tea, whatever your comforting, cozy, happy places, this is where that will take you. It may not be for everyone. Most niche perfumes will never be satisfying to every person on the planet. But if you like a creamy, milky, vanilla forward tea note in a perfume, this is magical. The marshmallow, I feel like definitely stands out, but it's not in a juvenile way. It still is a little perfumey, but it's not its not going to be like your Valentino Donna Born in Roma type of scent. It's still, it's like a gourmand, like a sweet, cozy gourmand with a perfumey vibe. So it still is acceptable to wear this on like date nights or day-to-day -day errands or I mean this is like at any time of the year all year long perfume this is definitely a signature scent type of perfume for me if you like a marshmallowy perfume with like a touch of a creamy milky like almost like a matcha green tea note this is magical the next one we're leaning more into the affordable perfume category I have a little bit here for everyone every budget I think all the way down to like $10. So this next one is Sweet Tooth Caramel Dream by Sabrina Carpenter. This is my favorite of the two. Um, the Sweet Tooth, the pink bottle, and then this one. This is my favorite. I've already gone through an entire one ounce bottle of this. I went through it in like a week. That's how much I like this one. It's like a sugary, caramel, chocolatey, vanilla, marshmallowy, fluffy perfume. But this one does have a note of patchouli in it, so it gives it just a little bit more density. It's not like a dirty patchouli, it's like a, a sugary, candied patchouli. The notes for this one, the top notes are sugar, almond milk, orange, lemon, and freesia. Middle notes are dark chocolate, vanilla, orchid, and orange blossom. And then the base notes are caramel, patchouli, musk, amber, and sandalwood. I've heard some people compare this to Angel. Again, I don't think they are even sisters. I don't think they're related at all. It may be like long distance cousins, six times removed type of thing, but I don't find them similar at all. And this is just like a caramel, heavy, chocolatey heaven. This is probably one of the best, especially like newer releases from Celebrity Fragrances, one of the best Celebrity Fragrances released. 
almost of all time, I would say. I talked about this one in my celebrity fragrance video that I have posted. I think it was my most recent video that I posted and I raved about it. It's just, it's such a nice scent for, especially for the price. I think you can probably find this one. I don't think the, this is the two ounce bottle, 2.5 ounce bottle. This is not very expensive and especially now that it is sat, it lasts for 10 times longer than it did whenever I had that first bottle that I flew through. I also have another one ounce bottle of this, so I have plenty to last me through the fall. I feel like this is going to be a super, super easy reach all fall long. It's just perfect. If you like a, a fluffy, cozy gourmand, but you don't want to smell like a cookie, you still want to smell sweet and edible and a little perfumey without smelling just like junk food or like you just left a bakery that you like rolled around in the food in, this one is right up your alley. So another affordable fragrance that you guys haven't seen me talk about for a while, but the dent, you'll understand how much I love this perfume just by the dent. I had to go hunting for the notes on this one because it's not on Fragrantica, so I do feel like this is a hidden gem that not many people know about. This is Honey Oud by Bella Vita. So it's going to be gone within like the next month or two for sure. This one, if you're not a fan of oud, this is still safe because I don't get any oud in this one whatsoever. I'll start off just by reading you guys the notes. So this one has top notes of honey and bergamot, middle notes of oud, rose and, rose, rose and patchouli, and base notes of oud, amber, vanilla, and musk. Now, while the oud is listed in there twice, yes, I know, this is so, so, so safe. This is not going to be your, like, oud-heavy, Middle Eastern vibe type of oud scent. This, to me, literally has no oud at all, and I'm very picky about those kinds of notes in my perfume. This, to me, is just like a vanilla honey with maybe, like, a touch of powdered sugar, but it's so creamy type of bomb. It is just so, so beautiful. And I, I don't have anything that I could compare to this, but it gives me such a nostalgic f a feel that I don't even know where it comes from. I have no idea where I would have smelled anything like this before. I do think, and I don't have it in my collection, but I do think that it does give me a slight vibe of Heat by Beyonce, which is a fantastic perfume. I used to have it whenever I was in like middle school and junior high and I do want to get that one back someday but this one it is just so comforting. It's also very very sexy so again this one is safe for date night, running errands. It's not thick, it's not heavy but it does have like that syrupy honey vibe. If you're not a fan of a honey note I still think this one's safe. I don't enjoy honey in a lot of my fragrances, especially if it's the dominant note, but this one, the way it just, it dries down, the way it sprays out, it just is like a princess. It just, it smells like a princess to me. This one, there's no rose. I don't get the bergamot. I don't get the oud. I get like a little bit of the ambery vanilla. I've heard some people say the musk comes out on their skin a touch more, but I really don't get any musk in this one. I think more than anything, it just helps with the longevity. When I first got this one, the longevity was maybe like three, four hours, but now I can put this on before bed and it, I'll literally wake up smelling like I just sprayed it. So um, again, 20 bucks. This one is just perfect, perfect for all year, for the comforting days, the cozy days, the days you want to lounge around in a hoodie and sweatpants, but you still want to smell good. This one is just perfection. Now, I know that a lot of the fragrances that I've talked about so far are more thick, vanilla forward, kind of rich, syrupy type of perfumes, but this one is going to be a perfume for like the clean girl comforting aesthetic vibe. This is Missing Person by Fleur. Now, before I talk about this one, one that I want to get my hands on so, so, so badly is Father Figure from Fleur. This one is fantastic, so I already know that Father Figure is going to be just as good. I've heard probably every review on the planet for it. I just haven't bought it for some reason. It's one that I, I know that I would love. I am picky about fig notes and perfumes, and it has a fig note in it, but apparently the way it's done is... 
just perfection again magical I tried to look for it at Sephora over the weekend but the Sephora that I went to they didn't have any fuller at all they had I don't think they had any niche perfumes whatsoever from what I've seen besides like three Mesa Margiela replica perfumes and that was it so I'm still on the hunt for it I still want to get it I still want to try it even if it's a sample just so I can see how it smells it's on my wish list but missing person is a musky airy slightly sandalwood slightly floral but mostly like a musky sandalwood to me it smells so good so this one is actually supposed to it's supposed to replicate like someone that you miss so once you spray it out once you put it on it's supposed to kind of give you a vibe of someone that you miss and I think that it's just because of the way the musk is in the scent. It's like a natural skin type of musk. So it smells just like a human, like a person, like a clean, fresh out of the shower person, but with a little bit of oomph, like just a little bit more. So the top notes of this one are musk, bergamot, and jasmine. Middle notes are neroli, cyclamen, and orange blossom. And the base notes are white musk, Australian sandalwood, and white wood. I'm not... The world's biggest musk lover but I think that mixed with that sandalwood and the orange blossom on my skin this is just magical when I smell this one I think of the color purple I think of like a warm purple musk it's modern but with like that classic cozy touch to it but not in a vintage way it's still it just almost takes me back to like childhood I've said before this reminds me of my Nana just because that that natural scent type of thing that you get when you smell like whenever you give your grandma a hug or your nana a hug they they always smell so good they smell like the perfumes and like clean laundry that is how this smells to me especially whenever i put it on and it lasts pretty decent too i actually i remember one day i wore this to bed and i think i put it on i got put it on after i took a shower i didn't put lotion on no lotion at all I woke up the next day at like 8 or 9 in the morning and I could still smell it pretty strong but the next night when I went to get back in bed I could still smell it on my sheets. So it is a decently strong perfume especially now that it's sat for a little bit. At first it was the not the best longevity probably like 4 or 5 or 6 hours which is still pretty good for like a clean skin scent musky perfume but now that it has sat for a little while it is just the perfect musky scent to me some people say it smells like lovely by sarah jessica parker i think i don't like that one at all i cannot stand that one that's like a a dirty white musk to me it just doesn't smell good to me but this one it has some warmth to it like that sandalwood shines through and i think this is just one of the most comforting musky scents in my entire collection so another super duper affordable one this is I think I literally paid like 10 bucks for this on Amazon. This is a classic. This is Vanilla Musk by Cody, if you can see that there. This one, I don't even know what year this one came out, if I'm being honest with you. It, oh, it came out in 1994, so a couple years before I was even born. So this one is obviously like a sweet, powdery, musky vanilla. But it has notes of sandalwood and cedar in it as well. Um, it's vanilla, musk, sandalwood, and cedar. That's all the notes that's in this. And it does definitely give like a... It's just like a comforting vanilla. But it has a touch of the musk. And again, the sandalwood is in there to balance it out. It has like a... You get the cedar in it, but it's not. you're not going to smell like a Christmas tree. It's just like that very soft soothing type of cedar it's super super comforting every time I wear this this is my second bottle of it by the way every time I wear this I just feel like I'm enveloped in like a vanilla cloud like a fluffy airy powdery vanilla cloud it's not super powdery so don't let that scare you off this actually reminds me a whole lot of Lyra by Zerjoff without the lemon so if you, if you like Lyra, but you don't like the super citrusy vibe to it or that like lemon cake vibe, I definitely say to give this one a try because I feel like this one would be better suited for those who don't like that, but you still want to smell like that vibe. 
and it does last very well too. It's not like a, a 12 hour perfume, but I'd say you could probably get a solid seven or eight hours out of it. Again, it's super, super affordable. I literally like maybe $10 or less on Amazon and you can get it at Walmart too. I do think it's a bit more pricey there, but I haven't been to Walmart in months. I hate going to Walmart. But I definitely think this one is a super great alternative for those who want a small, comforting, cozy, or even smell like a niche perfume, Lyra, on a budget. This is super budget friendly and it smells so, so good. So we're going back to another tea perfume. Tea perfumes are some of my all time favorite perfumes of life in general. I feel like they, if they're done right, they're so comforting and sexy and sweet. And they just smell like an angel. And I have a perfume that I'm going to show you guys in a few minutes that I have compared to the scent of angel wings. I heard one of my friends, Victoria, say that on one of her posts about another perfume that she was mentioning. And I didn't quite get the... I didn't quite get the reference. I, like, I could imagine what she was talking about. But until I smelled this perfume that I'm going to talk about in a minute... I got the reference as soon as I smelled it. It literally smells like a wing, uh, the wings of an angel. It's just perfect, but we'll get to that one. This one here is Liam by La Tafa. So this is a dupe for Gris Charnel by BDK. This one is a, a tea, cardamom, vanilla, tonka bean, sandalwood perfume. Those are the main notes that I get in this one, but there are a few more. So the top notes are cardamom, fig, and black tea. Again, a, a perfume with fig done right. It's not super prominent in there to me. I don't get a ton of it, but you do get a hint of it in the opening. It's a very sweet, but again, like more tea leaning type of fig. So if you had like a black tea with some spiced cardamom in it, and then maybe you put like a fig syrup in it, like a fig flavored syrup in it. That is kind of more what I would give it. It's not overpowering. So if you're like me and you're picky about fig notes, I still think this one is super, super safe. The middle notes of this one are iris, vetiver, and labdanum. And then the base notes are vanilla, sandalwood, tonka bean, or tonka, and patchouli. So this one, like I said, is the cardamom black tea, the vanilla, the sandalwood, the tonka, Especially in the dried in you guys, this is intoxicating. This is so sexy to me. I have been obsessed with this one. I have wanted to get Grease Charnel by BDK for such a long time. But then I came across a video. I think I don't I think Ksenia on here had posted it. And I seen her talking about how this was a dupe for it. So I did some investigating and it in fact is a almost spot on dupe for it for like twenty or twenty five dollars. At least it was whenever I bought it. People are starting to talk about it a little more, so the price could have gone up on it, but it's still, even if it's under like 30 bucks, it's still super affordable. I love this perfume so much. Again, signature scent worthy. It's clean, but it's still sweet and sexy. You're not gonna smell gourmand. It is just one of those that's perfect for all year, perfect for date night, any time of the year. I think this will smell absolutely incredible in the fall time, even the winter time. The longevity, the sillage is fantastic on it. If you like scents, and I'm not saying that they're similar, but if you like scents like Versace Crystal Noir or it is similar to Musamon by Latafa, that one to me smells like a, just a beautiful mixture of Versace Crystal Noir and Gris Charnel by BDK. Again, a heavenly, comforting, sexy perfume. I do definitely think that this one is going to be like an office safe perfume. And for those who, even if you work in like healthcare, I know some people still like to wear perfume in healthcare, even though you're not supposed to technically. But I do think that this one is going to be a little more safe because it does have that clean essence to it. You're just going to smell sweet, clean, sexy. And you're gonna just give off like you're gonna radiate comfort and just cozy and which I think to me is exactly what someone in healthcare needs because I know that there's gonna be those super hard days where they really really just need that comfort and maybe their patients need to smell that comforting vibe so I do think this is definitely one that would be safe don't overspray it because it is pretty strong 
maybe like one behind the neck um like one behind each knee or something like that so you're not overpowering everybody but I definitely think that this one would be such the perfect scent to wear if you were in that health if you were in that field so I will go ahead and talk about the perfume that smells like an angel's wings to me this has been going super duper viral lately and for good reason first of all look at the bottle look at how pretty that is it just gives like an ethereal angelic goddess like type of vibe but this one i'll let you guys know this is said to be a dupe for blanche bet i i don't know if i smelled that one i cannot remember to save my life i swear that i have at some point but it doesn't even matter <sighs> This is like a creamy, milky vanilla with like a touch of tuberose, but not the kind of tuberose that's in My Way by Armani. This is like if you, if you made a milk tea out of a, the tuberose flower, kind of like how they have jasmine tea. This is basically the tuberose version of that, but it's milky, it's comforting, it's vanilla. This one, I'll read you guys the notes. So. Before I do, in Blanche Bet, I believe that there is a milk note listed in that perfume. It is not on this one, but this is by far like a super creamy, milky perfume, almost like a heavy whipping cream type of perfume. So the top notes are cinnamon and mystical, which is a molecular note. The middle notes are tuberose and mahonial, which is also a, um, a molecular note. Um, middle notes are also jasmine and incense, and then the base notes are vanilla, tonka, and musk. So, you guys, if you don't like Blanche Bet, don't even think about getting this one. If you don't like, like a milky, creamy, sweet, heavenly perfume, don't get this one. But if you do like those vibes, get your hands on this because this is truly I don't even I can't even tell you guys how quickly I fell in love with this literally after the first spray I sprayed one spray on my hand and I sat there and I was talking to my brother's girlfriend and I just kept getting wafts of it and I should get her on here sometime to talk about my reaction to this perfume because I literally just kept saying oh my gosh it smells so good every time I'd wave my hand around it smells so good she was sitting on the other side of the room. We have like a pretty large sectional in our kitchen, in our living room. And I was sitting on like this end of it and she was sitting all the way on like the, so I was here, she was here. She was on the very opposite end. With that one spray, she could smell it all the way over there. So it is pretty strong. Some people say that it doesn't last or they say it's weak, there's no sillage. In my experience, that is far from the truth. It lasts, it gives just like this decadent, sweet, angelic sillage. <sighs> Again, you guys, I don't even have the words to describe how much I love this perfume. If you want something that's cozy, but sexy and intoxicating and hypnotic, this one I definitely, definitely recommend for you guys to get your hands on. So with this one, I'm jumping back to a little more of a classic fragrance like the early 2000s, mid-2000s, kind of Y2K-esque. I don't know when this one came out. Um, so this one actually came out in 2014, but, which I could see that because it does give me a little bit more of a modern version of its family members in this, this category. This is Juicy Couture Gold Couture. I'm sure most of you recognize this bottle by now. I've talked about this so many times in my past videos. This one, it smells like the Juicy Couture vibe, but better. It has caramel in it. This one to me actually reminds me quite a bit of the Tea's Coco Noir from, or is it Tea's Coco Soiree from Victoria's Secret. But that one has a little bit more of like a red berry, sweet cocoa leaning vibe. Whereas this one, the cocoa is replaced with caramel. So the top notes for this one are wild berries, gardenia, lily of the valley. Middle notes are honeysuckle, jasmine sandbag, and vanilla orchid. And then the base notes are caramel, vanilla, sandalwood, and praline. 
So it has those really nice perfumey floral notes that actually come together really well in the opening. Some of those notes scare me sometimes when I see most of them listed like that in a perfume, but in this one it's done beautifully. You get the berries in it. It's like a very sweet, perfumed type of berry. Like I said, similar to what's in um, Tease and Tease Coco Soiree. They're very similar in that opening, but once the base notes hit with the caramel, the vanilla, the sandalwood, and the praline, it dries down into this just like sweet, sexy caramel. You do still get a hint of the floral. Um, the berries kind of just lay there the entire time. They don't disappear. But the caramel definitely comes in and takes over. It turns into more of the vanilla caramel type of vibe. It does have a prominent sandal note, what sandal wood note in it on my skin, but in just like a creamy, seductive type of way. It's not a super mature scent. It is a little bit more, I don't want to say on the juvenile side because I think this is one of their more upbeat, like classier scents from the Viva La Juicy lines and the Juicy Couture lines, but it's it's a Juicy Couture perfume. So it's still going to have that vibe of that like young, flirty, playful, but with the caramel and the vanilla that's in it, I feel like it makes it super cozy. It's just, I feel like it's going to be one of those, again, where you're cuddling like with your partner and Maybe you have on like an oversized sweater or something. You guys are laying there watching TV, like a Netflix and chill type of perfume where they think you smell sexy and edible, but you're still like in your cozy, comforting, just overall vibe. You just feel happy and content. I feel like this one is going to be perfect for that time. I still absolutely love this and I don't think I'll ever not have a bottle of this. So next up, this is going to be Devotion by Dolce & Gabbana. I have like a non-existent little dent in here because I feel like I've used this a little too sparingly. But I've also been trying to let it sit for a little bit longer, let it master it for a little while. And this one to me is like a creamy candied lemon. So it's almost like a lemon bar, but I get like a, a whipped cream or like a heavy whipping cream type of vibe in this one once it dries down. In the opening, it's just like a candied lemon with some like powder or not powdered sugar like the sugar slices like the orange slices that you see that have the sugar sprinkled on them but make it like a lemon that's what you get in the opening but as soon as this starts drying down it just turns into like the most sweet comforting creamy just overall like a a creamy lemon bar type of scent like if if a lemon bar had a layer of just like a, a heavy cream in it or like a whipped cream glaze on top or something like that. This, I hated this the first time I smelled it. I've shared with, shared you guys, shared this with you guys before. So the top notes for this one are candied lemon. The middle notes are panna cotta, orange blossom, and rum. So it, it does have like a smidge of a boozy touch, I guess, to it. But I don't ever think that it's like an overly boozy type of scent. So if you're not like a, a liquor or an alcoholy type of person, I definitely think this one is still super safe. And then the base note is vanilla. Overall, I get like, the, I get the panna cotta in it. I get the lemon. I get maybe like a hint of the rum that's in there, but it's just adding some warmth to it. It's not overtaking or becoming super boozy. It just warms it up and makes it like, it, it's, it turns from candy to like, a melted candy in a in a whole dessert a whole snack if that makes any kind of sense at all but the vanilla definitely overtakes in the bottom this does give me a slight vibe of Lyra I would say maybe like distant cousins but to me this one is more of like a candied lemon versus how that one is like a super sweet creamy candy or like a lemon pastry this one is more leaning on the side of like a lemon bar so you get a little bit more of that lemon in there but again it's not like pungent to the nose it's not citrusy in a way that smells like cleaner which is exactly what I thought it smelled like the first time I smelled this but after it sits for a little bit after it warms up on the skin and it dries down it becomes just the most perfect candied lemon like a lemon snack a lemon cake lemon bar it's just heavenly. I feel like I still get a whipped cream note in this. It's very creamy. It's like 
almost cakey, but not too cakey. It's not too gourmand. It's still perfumey. And it's super comforting, super cozy. So again, I definitely think this one would be a very, very nice addition to your fragrance collection if you like fragrances like Lyra or you just want to smell like a yummy snack. Next up is one that I just recently brought back into my collection after I used up an entire bottle of it. This is Guess Seductive Noir. So this one is probably probably one of the sexiest perfumes out of this entire collection, the most appropriate for a date night. This one, I will say, this one, it smells a little bit different now than my last bottle did. Not much, but after I used that perfume so much that I noticed the slight differences because this perfume has not had time to sit and macerate. It's, oh gosh. I literally just got this back in my collection like two days ago. I missed it that much. I'm not the kind of person that loves repurchasing fragrances after I use them up unless I really, really love them. I have to really like a perfume. But thankfully this is super affordable. So this one here, I'll read you guys the notes. The top notes are sage, bergamot, and peony. So you do get the sage in there. It is compared to Mangerlan by Guerlain. Um, whereas that one has like a, a lavender, like a sweet milky lavender. This one is like a sweet milky sage that translates to almost the same thing. But I think this one has a touch more of like an herbal feel, which I love even more than Mongerlan. Um, the middle notes are iris, jasmine sandback, and lily of the valley. The base notes are vanilla, Haitian vetiver, and velvet, which... I think the velvet note actually is, I know it might be like a made up note, but the way this just smells so silky and smooth, it is intoxicating. I think this is, it literally fits its name. It's like a nighttime, seductive, sexy type of vibe. I definitely think this one is more vanilla heavy, especially after it sits and that vanilla has time to shine through. I don't even want to give this time to sit because I love it so much. I've wanted to wear this nonstop since I got it, but it has a little bit of that iris in there. So if you like the vibe of iris, how it kind of gives a, like a silky powdery touch, I do think this one is going to be absolutely perfect for you. I don't think this one has necessarily like, I don't ever say like a perfume has an age category, but I do think this one would be safe for like more mature or even like the younger crowd or the middle aged. I really think this one is super, super versatile. I find this one to be one of the most comforting perfumes ever, even though it has this super sexy, seductive nighttime vibe. I still think it is absolutely stunning. It is probably, again, one of like the most decadent, not decadent in like a sweet candy or like a, a gourmand type of way but decadent in the way that makes someone want to just like grab you and eat you up. It's mesmerizing. And again, not everybody's going to love it, but if you like scents like Mongerlan or um, I want to say Into the Night, but I don't think they're extremely similar. I will say that it does smell similar to the, I had to grab it so I'd remember the Tease or Candy, Tease Candy Noir. This one is a little more candied forward it's I love this perfume or it's a mist I have the mist of it but it, there is a perfume of it I love that scent but I think this one is a million times better I do layer them together but this one just does not need any layering this is one that I feel like when I smell it I can't stop smelling it I I just get enveloped in this like a hypnotic cloud like that kind of person that just has it together, but they're still that, that kind of person that you can go to and just talk about anything to, that you just feel like the ultimate comfort from, like they're not going to judge you, but you know that they have it together and you know they would take care of business if they needed to. I don't even know what else to say about this because it is that good. And again, it's super affordable. I think I just paid like $23 for the 2.5, 2.5 ounce bottle on Amazon. If you get this and you're not in love with it, spray it out a few times and let it sit for a week or two or a few weeks. The longer, the better. Pull this out for fall time and just 
it's one of those thank me later type of perfumes. It is that good. So we're almost done. There's only two more. This next one is one that you guys may have never heard of. I have talked about it on my channel a couple of times. This one to me, while a note or a perfume like this would typically be something you would wear in the summertime or like the warmer weather, I find myself only wanting to reach for this on like cold, like super crisp, cold, snowy days. And it could be the name that just makes me want to do this, but this is called First Snow. And the juice is like a milky white juice. I... I never thought that I would say this, but this is by the, the Swiss Army Company. The one, yes, the one that makes the Swiss Army knife. This is the Victor and Ox perfume. This is like a vanilla, oh, a white tea and vanilla. It just smells so clean and sweet and crisp. It, it smells like when you were in school and you guys get the first big snow of the season and you're waiting for the call that says school is called off the next day. This is immediately where that took me. Whenever you get that call, it's snowing outside, you get the call saying that school is canceled for the next day. This is exactly where that took me the first time I smelled this. So this one has top notes of eucalyptus and white tea, middle notes of vanilla and orange blossom, and base notes of tonka bean and white musk. Again, overall, this is a predominantly white tea and vanilla perfume. It has like a slight touch of that eucalyptus in the opening, but it's not in like a minty eucalyptus way or an essential oil type of way. I'm not a fan of that, but the way it is done in this one, you guys, like I said, it's like a crispy, like a, 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 a wintertime crisp, cool air perfume. It literally smells like cold air, like a cold tea, a cold white tea with some vanilla flavoring in the winter time when there's snow on the ground. They nailed the name on this perfume because that's immediately just where my mind goes with this one. I won't spend a ton of time on this one because I feel like I could just keep going on and on about it, but again, it's super affordable. Victoria, the one I mentioned earlier, is also the one that put me onto this one. I've had it for a little while, I think for possibly two winters now and like I said the only time I want to wear this one is in the winter time like fresh out the shower this actually smelling this again does kind of give me a vibe of Gris Charnel or Liam by BDK without the fig and without the cardamom so if you're not a fan of that but you like that tea note and you like that vanilla that's in it I think this would be a great alternative last but not least is another affordable one. I picked this up at TJ Maxx for $16.99. Now while this one is technically categorized as a hair and body mist, they do make a perfume of this as well. That is a Creme Brulee by Le Monde Gourmand. I love the packaging on these big bottles. I love their little bottles too, but something about the packaging on this one just looks so sleek and expensive. But this one... It literally smells like a creme brulee with like whipped cream on top. Vanilla creme brulee with whipped cream on top. So the notes for this one are vanilla, whipped cream, and caramel. It does not show a creme brulee note in it, but it translates to just like a pure yummy creme brulee with, I could see it having a little bit of a caramel drizzle on top if you really search for it. But if you're not searching for it, I do think that this one is just straight up creme brulee. I mean, this one, I actually, I love spraying this one in my hair, especially whenever I wear my more gourmand leaning scent combos. It lasts for so long. If I spray this in my hair, like right after I shower, blow dry my hair, whatever, if I spray this in my hair, it's going to be there until I wash it again. On the body, you get like the average longevity out of this one especially for it being a, a body mist it's not even the perfume I am super thoroughly impressed with the longevity on this one I think this one is going to be perfect for the fall time I've kind of tried to hold it back and save it I've worn it probably like three or four times in my hair I've sprayed it on my body but again I just love using this one in my hair it just smells so yummy but it's not if you're not like a syrupy, thick, gourmand type of person, say like 
Sticky Dates from Lush or um, Shirosa 71 or even like the Vanilla Cashmere Lotion from EOS, but you still want to smell like a snack, I do think this one is absolutely perfect. It's still light and fluffy, but it still has that edible overall essence to it. So you guys can get this so, so cheap. I think it's even super cheap on Amazon, super cheap on their website. I need more of these. I have, I think, one other one from Le Mans Gourmand, and that's the dragon fruit one, and I'm almost done with that bottle. It's also the hair and body mist. You really can't go wrong. They're super affordable, so if you want to smell like a yummy creme brulee snack or you would like to get like a good hair perfume, I think this is the way to go. Like I said, they make a perfume version of this, and it is just so, so yummy, comforting all the things that you're looking for in like a a comforting Netflix and chill or cozy up by the fire type of perfume. All right, you guys, so that was my 14 most comforting cozy perfumes in my entire collection. I was gonna try to keep it at 10, but that is impossible, especially when there's so many good options that I had to share with you guys. Like I said, there's some for everyone, high end, like middle range, affordable, designer, niche, there's something for everyone in this whole entire collection that I just shared with you guys. If you guys have any cozy comforting perfumes that you think I would like, any especially tea perfumes, if you have any of those that you think I would like, leave it in the comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment of your scent of the day. You know the drill. And don't forget that I love you guys.